Hello children, warmly welcome to Guru Kedara educational program. As usual, today also I am going to teach you another important lesson in grade 11 science syllabus. That is unit 13, electromagnetism and electromagnetic induction. Today I am going to teach you the second lesson of this unit that is electromagnetic induction. Right. My dear children, when talking about the topic electromagnetic induction, we can't forget the name of great scientist Michael Faraday. Why is that? He is the first person who discovered about electromagnetic induction. Right. What is electromagnetic induction? Right. To understand the electromagnetic induction, I am going to do a simple activity. So, let us engage in this activity and find out what is electromagnetic induction. Right, I am using a center zero galvanometer. You have seen this one. We use a center zero galvanometer to find out small amount of current as well as the direction of flow of current because 0 is at the center, if the galvanometer indicator deflects to the either sides, we can say current is passing to either sides. I am using a copper coil, I have wound up a copper coil around a PVC tube to produce this coil, I am using connecting wires here. And also, I am going to use a bar magnet. As you know, a bar magnet consists of north pole and a south pole. Right. Let us do the activity. First of all, I am connecting the coil into the center zero galvanometer. Now, I am going to move this bar magnet in and out. So, you can see my dear children, when moving the bar magnet in and out, the galvanometer indicator deflects to either sides. What does that mean? The direction of galvanometer indicator takes place only due to the flow of current. That means, you can understand that when moving the magnet inside the coil, current is generated through this circuit. There is no other battery or dry cell or solar cell. Only materials are magnet and the coil here. Another thing, when I move the magnet inside, it turns to the right direction. But when I keep the magnet inside the coil, there is no deflection. The galvanometer is at the center. No deflection means there is no flow of current. Again, when I am taking this out, it moved to the left side. That means, when taken out, a current is passing through the circuit. But when I take it out, there is no deflection in the galvanometer. That means, there is no flow of current. You can understand my dear children, when there is no motion, there is no flow of current. But when there is a relative motion, there is a flow of current. That means, Electricity is generated only when flowing the only when moving the magnet inside the coil, or if not, we can move the coil inside the magnet. Right. Here, let's learn what is electromagnetic induction, the generation of an electromotive force, the generation of an electromotive force between the terminals of a conductor, when the conductor is kept at rest in a change in magnetic field or when the conductor is moving in a constant magnetic field is known as electromagnetic induction. All right. That means, my dear children, you can understand that Michael Faraday discovered that 
electricity can be generated by moving a magnet inside a coil or by moving a coil near a magnet. This is called as electromagnetic induction. What happens really is inducing an electromotive force through the coil, right. You can see this animation. As you can see, when moving the coil inside that deflection, taking out a deflection to the opposite side, deflect to the right side, inside the coil, no deflection, taking out it deflects to the left side. That means you can understand generation of current takes place when moving a magnet inside a coil or near a coil. When you draw our attention on this animation, you can understand that here magnet is at rest. These are the two poles of the magnet. Here coil is moving. When moving the coil, electricity is generating. So, we can understand that electricity can be induced by moving a coil near a magnet. There are two ways. What are they? By moving a magnet near a coil or by moving a coil near a magnet, right. So, as you know, the galvanometer produces a deflection when there is a current passing through it. If there is no current passing through the galvanometer, it does not show a deflection. And also, an electromotive force has been created by the relative motion between the coil and the magnet. Right. Such an electromotive force is known as induced electromotive force. How do you call induced electromotive force? Right. My dear children, do you know what are the factors that affects on the intensity of induced electromotive force or induced current? These are the factors. First one, the number of turns or windings in the coil. That means, when the number of turns in the coil increases, magnetic uh, induced electromotive force also increases. Second one, strength of the magnet. I used a bar magnet. When I use a powerful bar magnet, the strength of the induced electromotive force can be increased. Third factor is speed of the motion of the magnet. You can see again, when I move this slowly, there is a slow motion of the galvanometer indicator. When I increase the speed, the deflection also increases gradually. That means, the third factor that affects on the induced electromotive force is the speed of the motion of the magnet or the coil, right. What are the applications of electromagnetic induction in our day to day life? You know that you have seen in such kind of instruments when using the credit cards or debit cards when paying our bills we have to rub it on the machine. When rubbing, there is a motion. Because of this motion, there is a induced electricity, there is an ele induced electric current, right. How to find the direction of the current induced in a conductor placed in the magnetic field? Oh, we have to use Fleming's right hand rule. Before moving to the right, Fleming's right hand rule, I am going to ask you a question. In a previous session, we studied about Fleming's left hand rule. For what do we use Fleming's left hand rule? We use 
play means left hand rule to find the direction of force acting on a current carrying conductor placed in between a magnetic field. Here we are going to study about Fleming's right hand rule. For what purpose we use Fleming's right hand rule? We use Fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of induced electromotive force or direction of induced current. Right. As you can see here, this is a bar magnet, this is another bar magnet, this is north pole, south pole, magnetic field acts from north pole to south pole. The green color conductor is moving upward direction. We have to use our right hand as shown in this diagram. Fleming said that we have to keep our right hand in this manner. How? We have to keep the thumb, the index finger and the middle finger in a position that are right angle to each other. How? The thumb, index finger and the middle finger in a position that are right angle to each other. Then the thumb represents the direction of motion of the conductor, the index finger represents the direction of magnetic field, so that the middle finger indicates the direction of induced electric current. This is the Fleming's right hand rule. As you can see, magnetic field is from north pole to south pole. The movement of the conductor is upward direction as indicated by the thumb. So that middle finger indicates the direction of induced electromotive force or induced current. Then I am going to remind again, Fleming's left hand rule is used to find out direction of motion or direction of force, but Fleming's right hand rule is used to find out direction of induced electric current. This is the Fleming's right hand rule. When the first three fingers of the right hand are oriented perpendicular to one another and the thumb is pointed in the direction of motion of the conductor and the index finger along the direction of the magnetic field that intersects the conductor. The middle finger shows the direction of the current flowing through the conductor. That is Fleming's right hand rule. Right. You can see that using this diagram also, thumb indicates motion of the conductor, index finger indicates magnetic field, middle finger indicates direction of induced current. Right. Now we have to study about AC generator. In the previous session, we studied about DC motor, direct current motor. Here, we are going to study about alternating current dynamo or AC generator. Here, we can draw our attention on the parts of alternating current dynamo. What are the parts? There is a strong magnetic poles. North Pole, South Pole, there is a coil named A, B, C, D. The end of the C, D coil is connected to the slip ring called Q. End of the 
A B bar E is connected to the slip ring called P. It passes through the slip ring Q. There are two carbon brushes S, X and Y. They are connected to the slip rings P and Q here. And there is external circuit that passes through a galvanometer. This is a center zero galvanometer and there is an axis. Here as you can see the ash color arrows represent the direction of magnetic field. As you know magnetic field always acts from north pole to south pole. This is the direction of magnetic field according to the Fleming's right hand rule. Here first of all we have to rotate the axis to a particular direction. For understanding purposes I am going to rotate this axis in anti-clockwise direction and explain the process takes place in this alternating current dynamo. Let us focus your attention. The ABCD coil is tightly connected to this axis. When rotating the axis anti-clockwise direction, AB bar moves upward, CD bar moves downward. Now we have to apply Fleming's right hand rule for each bar of the coil. First of all, when drawing our attention on the AB bar, when we rotate the axis in anti-clockwise direction, AB bar of the coil goes upward direction. Then we have to find out the direction of the induced current. Let us apply Fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of induced current. Right. Magnetic field is from North Pole to South Pole. It is very clear. We are going to move the coil anticlockwisely. As a result, A B bar goes up. It goes upward direction. The thumb represents the direction of A B bar. And in that case, the middle finger points towards myself. That means the middle finger represents the direction of induced current. That means my dear children, you can apply Fleming's right hand rule to find out the direction of current through A B bar. So if I ask you a question, what is the direction of current in this A B bar? A to B or B to A? Just apply Fleming's right hand rule. According to the Fleming's right hand rule, magnetic field is from North Pole to South Pole. AB bar is moving upward direction. So, current passes from A to B. Current passes from A to B. Now, let us focus our attention to the direction of flow of current. Current passes from A, B, C, D direction up to the Q, D to Q. Apply the Fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of induced current by turning the coil in anti-clockwise direction as we learn, right. You can see current passes from A to B, from B to C, C to D, D to Q, from this coil, the Q slip ring is connected to the Y brass, carbon brush. Then Q to Y, Y to galvanometer. So, galvanometer indicator deflects to left side. From galvanometer to X, X carbon brush. X carbon brush to slip ring P, P to again A. 
so we can understand the direction of flow of current as a to b b to c c to d d to q q to y y to g g to g means galvanometer galvanometer to x x to p slip ring p to again a that means you can understand current passes from y to x through the galvanometer as a result galvanometer indicator shows a deflection to the left side this is the application of fleming's right hand rule to find the direction of current in alternating current dynamo here when ab moves up cd moves down as i told you when rotating the axis in anti clockwise direction ab moves upward cd moves downward now when the coil completes a half rotation what happens here when the coil completes half rotation ab bar which was in this location moved to the cd location because earlier cd bar was in this location ab bar was in this location now after half rotation what has happened ab bar is in that location where the cd was cd bar is in that location where the ab was now we can apply fleming's right hand rule to find out the direction of induced current for this moment here here when applying the fleming's right hand rule for the dc bar in this instance current passes from d to c why is that we are moving this anti clockwisely so dc bar in this moment goes upward earlier it moves downward so here when applying fleming's right hand rule we can find out that again magnetic field is from north pole to south pole index finger represents the magnetic field the thumb represents the direction of motion of the cd bar the cd bar moves upward direction in this instance current passes from d to c now my dear children can you understand the difference of flow of current earlier current flowed from a b c d that means in the first instance flow of current took place from c to d in the second instance flow of current takes place from d to c now d to c c to b b to a a to a to p slip ring a to p slip ring from p to x carbon brush x carbon brush to galvanometer as a result galvanometer indicator deflects to right you can remember in the previous instance galvanometer indicator deflected to the left side in this galvanometer deflects to right side from galvanometer to y from y to carbon brush carbon brush to q slip ring q slip ring to d this is the direction of flow of induced current again we can find out when the cd moves up ab moves down as a result current passes across d to c c to b b to a a to p p to x x to galvanometer through the galvanometer to y y to d from x to y you can remember earlier current passes from y to x through external circuit in the second moment after making a half rotation current passes from x to y that means you can understand the galvanometer indicator deflects to either sides 
So, what does that mean? If the galvanometer indicator deflects to either side, that means an alternating current is passing through the galvanometer because the deflection to either side represents that the direction of the current is changing alternately. That is an alternate current. So, you can understand. AC generator or alternating current dynamo is a setup used to produce alternating current. That is why we call it as alternating current dynamo. Conclusion In each and every half rotation of the armature or the coil, the direction of current through the external circuit changes because AC generator generates an alternating current. I am going to show you a simple activity to demonstrate the alternating current. My dear children, this is the diagram of alternating current dynamo. Here there is a strong magnet North Pole and South Pole here. There is an armature, armature made up of copper wire, and there is a LED. I am going to rotate the you can see that. You can see that when moving the shaft, an AC current is generating, that is why the LED is glowing. Right here, Fleming's right hand rule is applied to produce alternating current dynamo. Right. If we want, we can represent the AC current produced by the alternating current dynamo using a graph. Here, as the first figure illustrates, in the first instance, when the ABCD coil is parallel, when the ABCD coil is parallel to the magnetic flux, because my dear children, you have to study, draw the attention, the red color arrows represent the magnetic field or magnetic flux. The red color arrows represent the magnetic flux which is spread from north pole to south pole. Green colored ABCD coil represents the armature. When the coil or the armature is parallel to the magnetic flux, there is no induced current. At that moment, induced electromotive force is zero okay right when turning a b c d coil as shown in the second figure you can understand that the a b c d coil is now perpendicular to the magnetic flux you can refer to the same figure as it is given in your textbook when the ABCD coil is perpendicular to the magnetic flux, the magnetic flux intersect. The magnetic flux intersect the coil. As a result, an electromotive force is induced in the coil. If the magnetic flux is parallel to the, if the magnetic flux is parallel to the coil, there is no electromotive force induced in the coil. You have to understand that these figures clearly explain that parallel instance, perpendicular, when turning another half, again parallel, again perpendicular, again parallel. So, here first instance, when the coil is parallel to the magnetic flux, there is no induced electromotive force 
alternating current is zero. When it is perpendicular, the current gradually increases. It becomes maximum when the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic flux. When turning little by little, the alternating current gradually decreases and when the coil becomes parallel to the magnetic flux, again electromotive force becomes zero. When turning gradually, again the AC current increases. When it becomes perpendicular to the magnetic flux, a maximum current can be experienced. Again, when turning, it gradually decreases. When turning 360 degrees of angle, the current again becomes zero. That means this figure correctly illustrates the variation of alternating current generated in the AC dynamo. Here, you have to understand that an induced electromotive force is generated only when magnetic flux is cut by the coil, right. So here, I am going to show you another video for further understanding of AC generator. You can see the deflection of the galvanometer indicator moving inside, right? According to right hand rule, parts of AC generator, two magnetic poles north and south, rings, slip rings, carbon brushes, coil. You can see magnetic field is from north pole to south pole. These are the slip rings attached to the carbon brushes. This is the center zero galvanometer. When turning anti-clockwise direction, galvanometer indicator shows a deflection to either sides. Why is that? Because of the generation of induced electromotive force. These arrows represent the magnetic flux from North Pole, South Pole. The yellow color arrows represent the direction of the coil. According to Fleming's right hand rule, you can apply the direction of, to find the direction of induced current here. In this case, the coil is parallel. When turning continuously, it generates an alternating current. This is the graphical representation of the current here. You can see it clearly. According to the direction of the motion of the coil, the variation of AC current can be observed very clearly. Right. Uh, my dear children, earlier we studied the application of Fleming's left hand rule. We learned that Fleming's left hand rule is used to produce loudspeaker. In the loudspeaker, Fleming's left hand rule is applied. Now, when producing a microphone, we have to apply Fleming's right hand rule. Why is that? Loudspeaker is a device that converts electrical signals into sound waves. But microphone is a device that converts sound waves into electrical signals. Here, 
we can find out the function of moving coil magnetic microphone. Here, when sound is given out from the source of sound, the microphone converts that sound into electrical signals. You can see according to the wave pattern, this kind of wave can be obtained only from the induced electromotive force as it is an AC current, alternating current. Here, this is the cross section of the moving coil magnetic microphone. First of all, we can understand the parts of the moving coil microphone. You know, my dear children, moving coil microphone consists of a strong magnet here. At the center of the magnet, a light weighted coil is fixed there. So, when talking to the microphone, the sound waves vibrate the diaphragm. A diaphragm is a cardboard cone. It is very light, simple structure. When talking to the microphone, the diaphragm inside the microphone gets vibrated. Then the diaphragm is connected to the light weighted coil, copper coil. So, what happened? When talking to the microphone, because of the sound waves, the diaphragm gets vibrated. When the diaphragm gets vibrated, the moving coil gets vibrated. When the moving coil gets vibrated, an induced electromotive force is generated. Why is that? This moving coil is placed in between a magnetic field. As you learned earlier, when a conductor is moving near a magnetic field, an induced electromotive force or induced current is generated. According to the uh, Faraday's electromagnetic induction, according to the Fleming's right hand rule, we can find out the direction of that induced current. So, here sound waves will be converted into alternating current as output voltage. You can see that the signal output, this is a sinusoidal wave, these waves represent an alternating current, right. This is a structure of bicycle dynamo. My dear children, you all know that bicycle dynamo is used to obtain current when riding bicycles at night because the front bulb is lighting with the help of current generated by the bicycle dynamo. Those days, most of the people used a bicycle for their traveling purposes. So, when they travel during night, the front lamp is lighted up with the help of a bicycle dynamo. You can watch this video to understand the function of bicycle dynamo. Electricity generation through a dynamo. This is also an instrument that generates electricity by electromagnetic induction. This is the rough wheel bar. This is a strong magnet. It is placed in between a copper coil. If not, we can place a cylinder, cylindrical magnet and a coil out. You can see that the parts of the bicycle dynamo, <laughs> magnet is there, a coil is there around the magnet. When rotating the bicycle wheel, the rough wheel gets rotated. As a result, the magnet rotates. As the magnet is placed around the coil, electricity is generated in the coil, which is used to light up the front lamp of the 
bicycle dynamo right my dear children let's focus our attention on the transformer as you know that a transformer is also a device used to convert one voltage into another voltage sometimes when we perform our day to day activities we have to convert low voltage into high voltage or high voltage into low voltage do you know what is the voltage that we receive from the national grid it is 230 volts alternating current what is the frequency the frequency of the current is 50 hertz what does that mean 50 hertz means 50 hertz means that current that alternating current that we receive from the national grid alternates or change its direction 50 times per second that is why we call it as 50 hertz of frequency but my dear children in our domestic activities we use various types of activities we operate various types of appliances sometimes we operate televisions laptops mobile phones ovens radios some of the appliances need a very low voltage some of the appliances can be operated with the help of 230 alternating current voltage in this kind of instances we use another device called transformer as you can see this is a small transformer this is a larger transformers used by powerhouses what are the uses of transformers as i told you earlier transformer is a device used to change the voltage of supply that means converts one voltage into another voltage before studying about transformer i would like to draw your attention on electromagnet can you remember what is called as electromagnet we learned earlier electromagnet is a device that generates a magnetism that generates a magnetic power only when flowing electricity here when this is a battery or a cell to supply current this is an iron nail a copper coil is wound around the iron nail when we supply the current the paper clips gets attached to the iron nail because this becomes an electromagnet when flowing electricity if you disconnect the switch what happened the magnetism vanishes as a result the paper clips may fall down again when we switch on the paper clips may attach that means an electromagnet can be produced by supplying a current to a coil which is wound around a soft iron core or iron nail what is the structure have you seen this model you have learned this in earlier grades this illustrates the structure and the function of electric bell you know electric bell consists of a metal spear a metal hammer soft iron core a coil copper coil wound around the soft iron core and this is the switch here there is a bell push when pushing the bell circuit gets completed current passes through the coil as a result this becomes an electromagnet this u shape soft iron core becomes an electromagnet as a result it gets attracted towards the magnet so the metal hammer strikes on the metal spear 
produced in a sound. Metal hammer strikes on the metal spear produced in a sound. This is an example to understand electromagnetism here. So, the transformer is also created by focusing this principle. This is the structure of transformer. Transformer consists of an iron core, a coil which is called as primary coil, another coil we call it as secondary coil. Then you may have a question, how to find out the difference between primary coil and secondary coil? There are two coils, one is called primary, the other one is called secondary. So, primary coil is the coil on which we supply the input current. Here, we have to supply only alternating current for the function of transform. Secondary coil is the coil which is used to obtain output current. That is how we distinguish the difference between primary coil and secondary coil. Right. This is the symbol of a transformer. We have to understand the symbol when applying this concept when answering questions for our exams. Here you can watch this video for the understanding of function of transformer. What is the transformer? As you can see, this is a soft iron core. There are two coils. Transformer is a static device. It has main three parts. What are they? Primary winding or and secondary winding. Third one, soft iron core. Three basic parts. Primary coil is the coil on which we apply the current or which we supply the input current. The switch supply AC power. When supplying the AC power to the primary coil, there is a voltage. We represent the voltage by V1. As a result of this coil, as a result of this current, the soft iron core becomes an electromagnet. As a result, the electromotive force is induced in the secondary coil. Here, we have to supply only a varying current. A varying current means an AC current which generates a varying magnetic flux. That means a varying magnetic flux is essential for the function of a transformer. I will explain you later. This is N1 means number of turns in primary coil, N2 means number of turns in secondary coil, V1 means primary voltage, V2 means secondary voltage. Right. Now, I am going to demonstrate another simple activity to study the function of transformer. Here, this is a transformer. Here, I am going to use two dry cells. How to operate a transformer by using dry cells? You know, my dear children, AC power supply is a varying current, but dry cells produce a direct current. Here, when we switch on, you can see bulb is glowing and is blinking. Again, it does not stay lighting. But when I make the switch on and off continuously, the bulbs are blinking. That means flow in of current. What does that mean? A transformer needs a varying current. Though the dry cells produce a direct current, when I complete the switch, it does not function. But switch off, at that moment only the bulb glows. That means when I make the switch on and off, 
it is similar to a varying current. When a varying current is produced, we can obtain output voltage. The transformers can be divided into two types as step up transformers and step down transformers. What is the difference? Step up transformers are used to convert low voltage into high voltage. Step down transformers are used to convert high voltage into low voltage. Step down trans step up transformers are used in powerhouses to increase the voltage before supply into the national grid and also microwave ovens in X-ray tubes. Step down transformers are used in power substations used to decrease the voltage before supply into the homes. You have seen some transformers in our villages, power packs and radios. All right, my dear children, as you can refer in your textbook, there is a relationship between the number of turns and the voltages in the primary coil and secondary coil. Here, NP means number of turns in the primary coil. NS means number of turns in the secondary coil. VP means voltage in primary coil. VS means voltage in secondary coil. Right. Here, we can build up an equation. Number of turns in primary coil divided by number of turns in secondary coil is equal to voltage difference in primary coil divided by voltage difference in secondary coil. You can see this in your textbook because we have to apply this equation when solving questions in exams. So, we can apply symbols for the same equation NP over NS equal VP over Vs. You can watch a video here, structure of step up transformer and step down transformer. This is the soft iron core primary coil. As you know, this symbol represents the alternating current. As I told you earlier, a transformer functions only due to an alternating current. This is secondary coil, right? You can see a difference in the primary coil and secondary coil. Number of turns in the primary coil is higher than the number of turns in the secondary coil. So, this becomes a step down transformer. So, when talking about step up transformer, number of turns in the secondary coil is higher than number of turns in primary coil. You can see this is the AC current. When AC current is supplied to the primary coil, what happens here? Because of the alternating current, a varying magnetic flux is generated in the iron core represented by the green color. It results an induced current in the secondary coil. This is the function of transformer. In the step down transformer, what happens? As I told you, number of turns in the primary coil is higher than number of turns in the secondary coil. There are 10 turns. Primary voltage is 120 volts. We can apply this to this formula. So, we can find out the voltage of secondary coil as by simplifying that the voltage of secondary coil will be 60 volt. Now, I am going to give you another question my dear children. Primary coil of a transformer consists of 200 turns and the secondary coil consists of 2000 turns. If the input voltage is 12 volts, first question, find the output voltage. Second one, what type of transformer is this? We can use the equation output voltage or secondary voltage can be found using this equation. Here, 200 
number of turns primary, 2000 number of turns secondary, voltage primary 2L volts. We want to find the output voltage secondary voltage. We can obtain the answer by subjecting the secondary voltage V is equal to 12 into 2000 divided by 200. Output voltage will be 120 volts. All right. What type of transformer is this? You can remember as the input voltage we supply only 12 volts. As the output voltage we obtain 120 volts. That means a low voltage converted into a higher voltage. So this should be a step up transformer. Right. Now this is the end of our session my dear children. So I am going to summarize the things that we learned today. What did we learn? We learn about electromagnetic induction and also we learn about alternating current dynamo, applications of AC dynamo and finally we studied about transformers and also we learn how to solve questions using the formula. Right. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. So I invite you please refer to the textbooks, past papers, answer the past paper questions, get the support of your class teacher and be ready for your all level exam. Before the end, I am going to invite you, please watch this video through channel NIE YouTube and have a nice day.